So now we're going to do a little bit more programming with the Go programming language. And uh, we're going to learn how to do loops. So create something that gets done over and over again. And if you want to learn more about the Go programming language, I have an amazing course, which is uh, you can find it either at greatercommons.com, which I'm building this website and it's going to be launching pretty soon. And uh, you can learn and teach and it's for the greater good of humanity. Right, so greater commons, the common area, you know, learning, education, it's for the greater good. So go there and take a look at my Go programming course. And if, uh, if you just happen to watch this right after I post this video and I haven't launched my website, you can go to Udemy Todd McLeod. And when you get there, you can click on uh, that one, Todd McLeod, Udemy. And then uh, when you get there, you'll see my Go programming course, which is right here. Learn how to code, Google's Go programming language. Great course for learning how to use the Go programming language. All right, so we're gonna go to Golang Playground and learn about doing loops. And uh, click on that, and this is where we can just code, go code right there. And, uh, and so a loop, and this is from a document called Effective Go. If you go to golang.org, this is the official website of the Go programming language. And uh, you click on documents, there's a couple of documents which are really important. And one is Effective Go. I mean, all this stuff is good to read. But the other one is uh, the, the package, the language specification right here. So Effective Go and the language specification. These are like high-end documents for referencing. So if you want to learn the language, go take my course. Don't try to learn it by reading those documents because they get really technical. But here in, in Effective Go, it talks about how loops should be done. And there's a couple ways you could do a loop. You could do it like this, or like this, or like this. And so this is for init, condition, post. And we're going to see what that means in a second. Or you could just do for some condition. And this is like while something is true, do it. Or you could just do an eternal loop for ever. <laughs> and inside you could set some condition to break out of it if you want. So we're going to do the init, condition, post. And, uh, and so to do that, we do for, and then we have to initialize a variable. So that's the init, we initialize a variable, and then the condition is why that variable is less than or equal to one uh, million, right? We are going to do something, and then after every iteration of the loop, we're gonna add one to that variable. So the variable starts out at zero, and uh, we could just bring this line up here and put it in, and we'll print out that number. So there's that number, and then we hit format, and it formats all of our code. But we start out with a, a variable which is declared. I is declared, and it's set equal to the value of zero. And, uh, and then it's going to run this code. It runs the code in between these curly braces. This is called a code block. It runs the code in this code block, and then when it's done running the code, it gets to the post. So after you run one of the loops of the code, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to add one to that variable, and that's how you do the shorthand notation for adding one to a variable plus plus. So it goes i is zero, runs the code, and then the post, right, adds one to it. i is now one. Is one, and this is the condition, is one less than a million? Yeah, let's do it again. So it's gonna keep doing that until it gets up to a million, and then when it hits a million and one, it's gonna be, well, a million one's not less, so it's no longer gonna run it. So if we run this, and we're gonna have to wait a second, because it's going to a million, and it's on the web, so it has to send all that back. Process took too long. So if this was on my laptop, it'd totally run, but, you know, it should run there. That's 10,000. There's 100,000, there's a million. Sometimes maybe the server's just busy. Doesn't like doing a million. Let's do 100,000, see what it does with that. Right, but here is bada boom, bada bing, bada, bada, bada boom, bada bing. There's a hundred thousand. Zero to a hundred thousand counted out. Pretty amazing. All right, so I want you to create a loop and uh, in for you know if you're in my class, and I'm just going to do this to ten, and let's see what that assignment is actually. Programming loops. Create a program that prints something out a hundred times, use the Go programming language, upload a screenshot of your results. Let's just do that a hundred then. All right, and so that would be uh, that would be what we'd need to do for this assignment. So take a screenshot of that and upload it and I'll give you credit. <laughs>